principal at the consulting firm National Capital Strategy Group. He's also the first vice president of the D.C. chapter of the NAACP. Uh, Douglas, first off, give me your reaction to the verdict today. It was a sense of relief. Uh, it, it really was. Everyone was waiting on pins and needles. Uh, uh, someone tweeted at me earlier today and said they were nervous. I said I am nervous as well. It was, it was uh, very interesting that, you know, I've never been nervous uh, to hear the outcome of a court case before, but this one really had people very anxious and uh, a sense of relief washed over me when I first heard the first guilty verdict. And then I knew after they convicted him on the first verdict that the other two dominoes would fall. So it was, it was, it was just very big sense of relief and okay, we can relax and 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 try to focus on the world, the, the road ahead. And and Douglas, uh, speaking of roads, we're looking at a road in, in Minneapolis right now. Lots of people out on the streets uh, demonstrating. We've seen drums, we've seen dancing, we've seen hugs, we've seen tears, and we've heard from some of these people on the streets of Minneapolis. Some of them saying. We're getting somewhere in this country. Uh, another saying, this is a do new day in America. But I think the most measured response was someone who said, this is not the ceiling, this is the floor. Uh, this verdict doesn't erase a lot of the problems that sent these people out on the streets this summer, does it? It does not. And I can totally identify with what that person said when they said this is the floor, but we were all just happy that the floor was not breached. Uh, there was uh, a mound of evidence against this officer for the charges that he was convicted with. And the prosecution did a masterful job of proving their case to the jury. And so, uh, you know, we would just hope that uh, there would be other cases where we can see that the officer is guilty and perhaps there's not as much evidence where we can still get a conviction uh, in these cases. So that's kind of what we're looking at here, because this is really an anomaly to have this much evidence. I mean, remember, this was a, a worldwide uh, protest regarding George Floyd. There were protests all over the globe. So this is unprecedented in terms of these cases of police violence against black males. So, uh, you know, again, like I said, we, we can regroup and get started on the road ahead, but we do have a long road ahead of us. But the most important thing is that we were able to get this big obstacle out of the way so that we can move forward. And, and Douglas, uh, Keith Ellison, the Minnesota, Minnesota Attorney General, uh, said today that this, this should be an inflection point. Um, the jury did their part. He said, now it's up to the rest of us. And, and the U.S. President, Joe Biden, said something similar, uh, saying, you know, we can change the trajectory. The George Floyd, uh, what is it, Policing Justice and Policing Act has been passed by the House. It's, it's on its way to the Senate. Do you think the Senate will feel some pressure to actually do something this time around? I really would hope so. And uh, I need to take a look at uh, the... the uh, the process in terms of passing that bill, if it's a simple majority, uh, then we have a chance of getting it passed. Uh, and I believe that this type of legislation would only require the threshold of a simple majority and not that uh, 60 vote uh, that is needed with a cloture uh, or the two thirds vote that is sometimes needed uh, when passing uh, different measures in the Senate. So we may yet see this passed. And that would be a big step forward in terms of addressing a uh, disparate treatment uh, of black, blacks and black males in particular, and people of color throughout this country at the hands of police. So hopefully we can get that passed and move forward. Douglas Sloan, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.